Welcome to Realcast, the weekly roundup of the real asset markets. We're here live in Cannes and I'm joined by Dan Innes um, and Courtney Finger. Um, huge focus on ESG here, lots of uncertainty in the market, but let's pick up with you, Courtney. Um, what was your sense? You were, at, uh, you, were, you were moderating a number of sessions, including some here in the, in the Club Cannes. What's your sort of MIPIM take? Well, the, the first and, and potentially most interesting read of investor sentiment is the Reinvest Summit, which brings together around 100 of the world's biggest capital owners, sovereign wealth funds, pension funds, and others. And they do roundtables and they talk about how they see the world. And probably tellingly, the first topic was what keeps you up at night, and the list was pretty long. But they're worried about inflation, they're worried desperately about interest rates, they have a feeling they don't know how to value anything anymore. They're worried about ESG, they see it as an opportunity, but how to measure it, uh, how to study it, what does ESG mean, how to make returns while, while being impactful. At the same time, they are sanguine about geopolitics. What they said over and over again is that the geopolitics looms over everything, but they can't control it, they can't influence it, so they just have to find strategies to mitigate and deal with it. So they feel that there are massive challenges in the world, but of course opportunities. They're very bullish on sectors like data centers, life sciences, and industrials, so they're still finding opportunities where they can. Uh, amongst the investment promotion agencies, we had a, a breakfast this morning where we gathered uh, officials from cities and regions and countries who were charged with attracting inward investment. And they're also more confident than they were last year, I found, because we, of course, just had the war in Ukraine start, and there was a lot of nervousness, especially amongst delegates from the Baltics and Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, they're still worried about that, but feel they're getting a little bit back to business. But then there was a sense to me, the entire days of MIPM, that these storm clouds were gathering, people very worried about Silicon Valley Bank and contagion in the financial system. So it felt that, like people are popping the champagne corks in MIPM, being, being bullish on many things, finding opportunities, but worried about what looms outside the gates of MIPM. Yeah, it was really interesting, I think, to pick up on some of that sentiment when I had conversations which were again equally positive particularly actually i mean it was interesting the 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 baltic rim seemed to be mm -hmm. um actually very popular i saw a session mm -hmm. around that and that was absolutely packed mm -hmm. but again you would bump into people on the quasette who would then say you know when you had the 50 basis point rise by the ecb mm -hmm. there was uncertainty about that because mm -hmm. of the banking mm -hmm. kind of side you know why are people drinking champagne here do they not see what's happening in terms of the economy so completely different sort of views mm -hmm. um what was your take on it what did you what did you pick out then well i was following a lot of the esg side um, essentially because uh, we've been seeing so many different investment businesses and landlords you know, shifting their focus um, and we've been monitoring the way in which many of these businesses have been you know make, making huge public statements about their ESG policy and you know we've been seeing changes to people's boards uh, new new appointments for new directors um, but yet you know we really need to see that tangible tangible change um, and on Tuesday um, I, I interviewed Christina Gamboa the chief executive of the World Green Building Council and she was essentially saying that across her 78 countries she's involved with, she's been seeing good progress but yet there's still much more much more to be done they're very aware of sort of greenwashing still um, but that yet there are numbers of investment businesses who are shifting their investment focus towards those that are displaying true ESG principles. Um, one great example that, um, that I saw this morning was uh, the investment into the Northeast with Amanda Staveley, PCP Capital Partners. She was saying how that's had a, a positive knock-on effect into, into social impact. Um, so onto the city of Newcastle upon Tyne in the northeast of England, uh, talking about their investments into things like you know, supporting issues as basic as, as child poverty, employment gains and other elements that real estate can have a huge, huge uh, play on. So many, many different impacts, um, lots of different, some, some of the supplier side or some of the professional services side, uh, a couple of architects that I spoke to, Pragma on the data side of architecture, they've brought in a new uh, Pulse software that actually monitors the performance of ESG and also Leonard Design. They have a new panel called Leonard Green uh, that they were actually just looking at in the way many of our investments are being judged, uh, so to speak, and to ensure that they do reach the, the necessary quality. But I think generally, I think I, I agree with Courtney, there's been a lot of champagne popping, but there is this sort of apprehension. There are some surprising champagne corks being popped out there, but I think there is a bit of a levelling, much more positive than Expo Real. Um, if you remember, we were literally quite 
doom and gloom post Expo Real. But um, yeah, MIPIM this year, I think, I would say on the, on the whole, positive. Yeah, there's an element of glass kind of half full, glass half empty, isn't there, around that. Um, ESG is certainly a huge, huge part of the conversation. When I mean, we had a round table on the Collier's yacht and some interesting things, not least the fact that it's the first time at MIPIM that I've ever had an event where there were more women than men. Genuinely the first time that has ever happened at MIPIM that, that wasn't an event about diversity. Um, so that I thought was actually incredibly positive. And there was a growing sort of focus on the functional ways in which you can deliver it. So we were actually talking not about is it a good thing, but actually what do you need to do to refurbish an office? Yes. Um, so how do you get it from something yeah. that is no longer sustainable into something that is positively sustainable? And I thought that sustainability side was coming through quite strongly as well with the investment promotion agencies as well, Courtney. Ab absolutely. Investment promotion agencies are very cognizant these days of trying to bring in investment that's sustainable and work with companies that have strong ESG credentials. You still have places in the world where there is perhaps a desperation to bring in um, any kind of investment they, they can get, but you see that less and less. Um, and we're starting to see a little bit of a, of a meeting um, and a coalescing around a shared idea of what sustainable investment is. Now, the practicalities, as you mentioned, that's where it gets more difficult, but at least the buy-in is there on both sides of the chain. Yeah, and we had, um, you know, interestingly, very successful events here, networking events at uh, the club on research and insight. You get a lot of focus on strategy here, people mm -hmm. looking forward a lot, I thought, mm -hmm. rather than thinking about mm -hmm. what the market is now, but thinking much about where it's going to be in, you know, p particularly by Expo Real, which may well be a much more positive mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. um, but also then around senior housing and healthcare, very well attended, uh, ESG and impact, again, very well attended. The magazine. So, and the magazine, of course, I mean, actually, interestingly, inside the Palais, Impact magazine was going far more quickly. So there's a huge amount of interest, I think, in that. We did sessions, interesting sessions on uh, logistics, big focus on debt at the moment as well, with concerns around the interest rate rises. And the living sector was also, I think, one of the key things that, that I picked up as well, a very big focus on both the affordable side um, as well as residential more broadly. So in general, I would say really interesting uh, MIP him. Um, I haven't seen such a diversity in views in terms of people who were positive about the market and negative about the market. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say still overall, I'm slightly glass half full, but maybe that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much to, to you, Dan, to you, Courtney. Thanks very much for watching and look forward to seeing you next week for our regular roundup of the real asset markets.